I made my first One Piece cosplay. I decided to make Uda from One Piece Red, and this cosplay really pushed me out of my comfort zone in more ways than I thought, since I do see myself as a beginner cosplayer. And I don't really see myself as a performer, but we'll get to that later. Now, I'm not a diehard fan of One Piece, nor am I caught up with the series, but I do read the series, I read the manga. I'm not the best manga reader, but I do read the manga. I decided to cosplay Uda because the new Genesis music video came up on my YouTube mix and I just fell down a hole of One Piece Red and I, next thing you know, I wanted to cosplay Uda. It's as simple as that. <laughs> now again, I see myself as a beginner cosplayer and when deciding to make in my Uda cosplay and realizing how many different components there are, plus adding my own crazy ideas. I did get overwhelmed and I thought, you know, maybe I shouldn't cosplay her, but I'm glad I ignored those thoughts and I made the cosplay anyway, because I achieved so much in the past six months since I made my Uda cosplay. I got to be in my first idol fest, I, I won an honorable mention in a costume contest, and I also... <laughs> I won my first ranking award in a cosplay competition. I won a novice award and I won a physical trophy with this costume. Um, a few months later was the cherry on top for me. I performed in a masquerade and I sang Fleeting Lullaby and Top Musica, a, a snippet of Top Musica, and just doing that performance in Japanese on stage live, that I, I, I felt fulfilled. I was like, yes, I did this costume justice, and I could get into that whole performance, but this is not what the video is about. This is about the cosplay. So, getting back to track, this wasn't an easy journey, nor was it properly documented, but I want to share this process since I want to look back on this and give myself motivation to finish other projects because this was something that I didn't want to finish. So hopefully I could give you guys motivation too with your costumes. For the pattern, I decided to cut up my current winter coat and use that as a pattern base since I knew that I liked the fit. I decided to make Uda's sweater as a winter coat because I had the freedom to add qualities I want in a coat. That and I also was missing an anime coat in my wardrobe. 80% of my clothes are anime themed, so I just wanted to fulfill that need <laughs> of having an anime coat. I made adjustments when translating the pattern to paper, one of the major adjustments being to the hood, which I made really large. I was excited when I made the mock-up of the hood because I have a lot of hair and I was excited to have a coat that can finally contain my wildness of my hair and also have the hood stay on my head, okay? I may be overexcited on this, but listen, okay? This was very important to me, okay? I- this was- I can't even speak. But anyway, going back to my fashion fabrics. I use broad broadcloth poly cotton, cotton poly blend from Joann's. Um, this was the best option for me because I wanted a fabric that was cheap, came in a wide range of colors, and mostly plastic, so it could be somewhat resistant to water. It wouldn't be completely waterproof, but I at least wanted the plastic in the fabric at least. And when cutting out all my pattern pieces, I added an inch of seam allowance. Um, from my thrifted fabric stash, I used this purple fabric and I made bias tape. I never bought or used bias tape before, but I made some incorrectly bias tape because I didn't even cut this on the bias. But it still worked. I just thought it was funny that I made incorrectly bias tape. But uh, I also made a bias tape maker by using Scrap Sintra and I ironed my bias tape. So these are all the different fabrics I used for the coat. It's funny because I had this expectation that I was going to make this entire coat in two days and after two days of working on this coat, that is all I had done. I had cut out all the pattern pieces so I set funny expectations for myself with this. For the next part, you're gonna get really bad audio because I didn't have a microphone when I recorded this, so warning. Okay, I wrapped the bias tape around the pockets 
And now I'm just gonna go over with the iron and iron every wrinkle, especially in the corners. And then I'm gonna use a top stitch to sew around the edge. So the place where it overlaps right here, it's going to be fine because this pocket is going to bleed into the waistband of the coat, the bottom part, so it really shouldn't matter. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to find like the best edges because technically this coat, the top, it's like round edges for the pockets. So I'm just going to pick whichever has the best rounded edges and use that side. <laughs> Imagine having to sew only this much left and you run out of thread. <laughs> I'm not okay. Okay, so I made the pockets. They're not perfect, but they're gonna be good enough. And I also made the little ears for the top of the hood. I made this out of the white felt fabric and the pink felt and the pink lining for the coat. So they're not the same material as the outside of the coat, but I still think they're cute. So I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making the buttons because each pocket has two buttons. So I have these buttons that I found in my stash and I'm going to be wrapping them in the purple fabric that I have and then just sewing them on. So do you guys like my pin cushion? Uh, I had one friend come over and she's like, if you're going to use anyone as a pin cushion, you should have made Lumi as a pin cushion. And I died laughing. <laughs> Okay, so I made these fabric buttons and I'm ironing them so that they could be flatter. Listen to this. <laughs> it's like squeaking. Okay, so I just made four purple buttons to go onto um, the pocket of Uda's jacket. And I was gonna look at a picture to see like where I need to place them on the jacket. Like, does it have to go like one inch, two inch, how far uh, on the pocket does it go? So I'm looking at this picture and in this picture, there's like the two, it looks like they're an inch down. But I also just wanna make sure that this is the correct placement. So I go to the new Genesis music video. And there's three buttons on the pocket. What do I do at this situation? I don't know. So I discovered that there's actually three buttons on each pocket. Sometimes it looks like two. It's just because of the angle. Um, at least that's what I think. I think like because of the angle, like you only see two buttons, but the pocket does go further back. So there would be another button there too. Um, my problem is that I wish I would have discovered this earlier because I only have the buttons that I used, I only have four of that size, so I can't really make six more buttons or two more buttons to have six. So I guess I'm just going to be using two buttons on each pocket, which I'm also looking at pictures online. There is like one other jacket of all of these that have um, the three buttons, but for me, like I would put three buttons, but I only have four buttons so that's what we're doing okay so if you remember i made four fabric cover buttons that i just dropped and then i realized that the coat actually has six buttons three on each pocket instead of two so i decided that i was going to make just keep the four that i have but i ended up finding a different solution i was going through my mom's sewing stash and i found that she had a lot of these this is like things for shower curtains that she had years ago. And so I just took six and I think I'm gonna use this and make the buttons, fabric covered buttons with these. They're a little bit smaller, but I think that's just fine. Okay, so I just finished sewing together the different layers for the vest part of the coat. And right before I sewed them all together, I decided to pin the vest and try it on. And I'm so glad I did that because the armhole was unbearably tight. Like my arm, like it fit perfectly, but when I put my arm down, I got this weird bunching right here on the vest and it just looked really bad. And I knew that if I had this coat and I would wear it like that, it would be tight. So I don't know where I went wrong because I used the exact same pattern for a coat that fit me perfectly. And I even added a, an inch of seam allowance, so 
I don't know where I went wrong, but th this is something that I could fix. So I ended up taking the sweatshirt that I'm wearing. I measured from seam to seam how big that armhole is. And I basically, I have binder clips here getting rid of this part here. And we're gonna see if this new armhole adjustment is going to work. If this does work, I, that means I will have to most likely adjust the sleeve. But I think that's gonna be fine because the sleeve, I have this center color. And so I feel like I could just add more space. Like this doesn't have any batting. So I, I know how to make the sleeve bigger without changing anything. I just have to add more material underneath this panel and it will work out fine. So I'm not worried about that. But yeah, this is why mock-ups are important and I do not make one. So I'm reaping what I sell. Okay, so I'm struggling, but this is a learning process. So trying to stay positive about this. I'm sewing all the side panels together, the panels for the vest. And I had trouble because the first time I was sewing it, I kept on getting like skipped stitches. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me change my sewing needle. So I changed to a 16 size sewing needle on my machine. And I kept on sewing. I kept on getting messed up. So I was like, okay, you know what? Uh, let's try changing the thread. So I changed the thread and it worked but because I'm now I'm using embroidery thread instead of um, my thread so I'm using my mom's sewing thread instead of mine and then now I'm sewing this together and I'm struggling because it's difficult to sew through this many layers like the sewing machine is having trouble like getting through all the different layers and so I was like oh my gosh and it doesn't help that I had to change the armhole size and instead of cutting it off i just folded it over and stitched it in place and so that is like another layer that it needs to sew through i really want to just stop making this coat but i kind of need to finish it like i want to at least finish it so i, I can do this okay so this is going to be the sleeve i added the layer on the one sleeve um this is going to be hot pink on the other sleeve it's going to be light pink I was going to use a double stitch, that's my iron, sorry. I was going to use a double stitch, double sewing needle for sewing on the bias, but my double sewing needle didn't reach this far wide, so I ended up using a straight stitch, and this is the straightest stitch I've ever done. I'm so proud of myself. So, yep, progress on the sleeve. With that, I decided to take a break and I taught myself a new skill. I learned how to make patches. I decided to learn how to make patches because they were selling Uda patches, but they were like $200 and I was not about to pay that money. So I taught myself how to make patches and I made them. They're not screen accurate, but I like them and that's really what matters. So I used my mother's sewing machine since her sewing machine is also an embroidery machine. But because of that, I also was limited to four by four patches at that time. So the patches were a lot smaller than I would have liked them to be, but I, again, I was really happy with how the patches came out. So I didn't really care that they weren't screen accurate or size accurate. I think they turned out nice. Another thing, people might point out that the sleeve isn't accurate to the reference because the panel, the center panel is a lot wider. And I did this on purpose because I know myself, I know I cannot wear white. I once had a winter coat that was white. It wasn't even a coat, it was a jacket. And it was completely white and it it did not last. This was when I was in middle school. So it didn't last. I know myself. So I decided to make the center panel wider so that I could have less of a white sleeve because the people who know, know so people just can't wear white and maintain it being white so i'd rather have less white sleeves and less white on my coat for me to actually wear because it'll be better for me some people know okay so now that i have the patches attached to all of the parts
parts. I have to make the cuffs and the bottom waistband for the coat before I sew the sleeve together because it'll be easier to attach the cuffs like that while the sleeve is still open than when it's already sewed together. So for that I got this fabric and we're going to be using the Cricut to add the color lines on it. So yeah. To get the color stripes of the cuffs, I used for the first time Cricut Infusible Ink. I cut them into strips, taped them down, and I used the iron to infuse the ink into the fabric. This was amazing, but after the first time I washed the coat, the color did fade. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, not bad. Yeah. Pink could have gone a little bit longer. Good to know, but still looks nice. Okay. Whew. You want to know how much layers are in this winter coat? I'm going to raise the foot to the sewing machine. Okay, I forgot how I made this hood. I knew, I think I sewed it here first, and then I sewed the ends and then the top, and then I sewed them together, but I'm not too sure. Like, vigorously looking at the mock-up. Okay, so I made the hood so far, and look, the hood can even cover my face. I've never had a hood that could do that while I wear it. Usually it falls back. I feel like it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> but lighting. So. so I sewed the hood. This is what it is so far. And look at that. <laughs> I wanna scream so bad. This is the one layer that I didn't like I guess. I don't know because when I pinned it, I used a bunch of binder clips and I clipped them all together and I sewed them. So I don't know how this there's this pocket. And that's not the only one too. Um, there's another one. It's right here. It's on the pink side. So I have to unstitch this and stitch it back together to fix it. Okay, so I fixed up the problem areas on the hood by using the ladder stitch, and all is well. What's funny is that I showed this to my mom, and she saw the inside, and she's just like, You have white satin on the inside? Because she even knows that I can't wear white. So, what I'm going to do is, <laughs> that's why I sewed it like this, because I know this isn't going to be the final lining. So, we're going to get black satin, satin and line it in the inside with it. Because even my own mother doesn't trust me. She knows that this is not going to stay white. Especially with like my hair products. So yeah. This is what we got for now. I ended up using my old prom dress that was silk gold. As the inner lining for my hood. Um, I had it and I wasn't wearing it. So I put it to good use. Also for Uda's back patch of her coat. I ended up hand embroidering that. And... For the lining, I just hand stitched the lining and my winter coat was done. Uda's dress was probably the simplest thing to make, but I made it complicated because I really wanted it to transform. The inspiration was the fleeting lullaby music video. I mean, look at that. My hair is giving off poodle vibes, but we're going to be here for it. So I did two different types of masks. And I got the same ingredients by doing two different calculations. And I watched like 40 YouTube videos on how to make a quarter circle skirt. It looks like the simplest thing in the world. So if I can't do this, I'm going to scream. But, you know, let, let's do it. Let's do this. Okay, so I draped my bodice. This is what we have so far. And then I still have the quarter circle skirt connected. So... This is going to be one panel. The benefit for, of me using this fabric 
yes i'm gonna need an underlayer but this fabric is so stretchy that i could stretch it over my basically my dress form and i don't need darts so that's great because <laughs> i don't like darts okay it's midnight i've been awake for over 24 hours but i think i got it so i have here i just have two layers of the thin fabric because i forgot that the bed sheet is not stretchy so we just have two layers of the thin fabric and then i have here on this white fabric this top is going to be sewn only on the waistline and then i gotta find a way how to connect these the top so it's either going to be magnets because like i have a magnet right here but it's kind of obvious so i don't know i need to buy a little snaps but it's gonna be temporary like the hold and then when i rip this off like i pull it and i have a black skirt hidden underneath the top right now actually and so i think i figured it out because then i gotta do the skirt sewing up here like sew it also to this waistband so i gotta connect <laughs> I, i'm getting it in my head though so that's the good thing okay i've had my uda dress on hold for a few months now because I was hoping that I'd find a better white fabric that's more similar to the black fabric I'm using for this dress, but I haven't had any luck, so we're sticking with this fabric. Um, I did, however, remember that I have this white fabric. It is a stretchy chiffon that doesn't get wrinkled. We got this at a thrift store a long time ago, and this is also the same fabric that I used as the top layer of my halter top for Kumiko so again I'm using the materials that I used for my last cosplay within this so I'm hoping that this would be enough to distract the fact that there's going to be another dress inside here because remember this is a transformation dress so I'm going to have a black dress on top of here and my main worry was that this fabric was way too thin and wrinkled easy so you would be able to tell that I have a dress hiding on the top of this one but I think with the addition of this um stretchy white chiffon it will it, it'll make everything better i'm struggling to ruffle this knit fabric because no matter how much times i sew and pull the thread it's not gathering i mess with the tension someone said that you need to have your stitch length and the tension at max and then pull a little bit on the string it's not working at this point i'm gonna use this ruffle foot my mom doesn't know how to use it even though this was in her stash and i don't know how to use it she said this was for a singer sewing machine so we're gonna see how i don't even know how to use this this looks scary so let's i'm currently sewing the two dresses together and because i really don't want to mess this up i went overboard with the sewing clips and pins this is the first test of the transformation dress. So. I think that was a success. Uda's headphones were fairly simple to make. To get the pattern, I just looked at this image and I drew a paper uh, pattern and I cut it out of EVA foam. I manipulated some parts of EVA foam to get the kind of shape I wanted and it worked out really well. So I started painting, but I was so excited that I forgot to prime the EVA foam and I got this weird texture after I finished painting the headphones. So. What I ended up doing was taking Mod Podge, I did five coats of Mod Podge, and then I took 400 grit sandpaper that was wet, and I wet sanded the Mod Podge brush strokes away. 
This is a good way to seal props that aren't flexible, but I will say right now, my Uda headphones do have a crack on them because they did bend in my suitcase and Mod Podge isn't really ideal for stealing all props, but it works in some cases when you do a little goof up. I also use the headphones as a way to hold up the little hair hoops that Uda has. Um, her character actually, the, her hair hoops actually pop out from the headphones, so that's how I got this idea. I just took a chopstick, made a hole between one of the layers of EVA foam, and I'm able to put on the little hair hoops and pull them out very easily. When I saw the massive black wings in Top Musica, I knew I had to have this in my cosplay. So I made them and I wanted them to open and close. So I did manage to do that with a costume change. For the frame, I used these Lowe's lures and Chicago screws. And for the feathers, I just used EVA foam. So it was very lightweight. Um, I used a linear accolator, six inches, to make the wings open and close. The electronics parts to that, I didn't really do. My brother and dad took over that, so I can't really explain that. But one thing that I do want to explain how I did is how did I manage to wear these wings and also manage to do a quick change? Because these wings were not attached to my back, but yet I was still able to do a quick change. So how was I able to do that? I would say that the wings were like a necklace, but instead of going around my neck, it went underneath my clothes to the front part of my bra and that is how it stayed attached to my body. The light blue line in that photo explains how the strap goes underneath my clothing. So that is how I was able to walk around without having a corset or without needing a harness to wear the wings to support it. Also the wings were very light so that was important for the quick change as well. So technically, the wings never really touched my back. They more so hovered over my back. But with that, my Uda cosplay was officially finished and I could wear her to conventions. And I love that this is a cosplay that's very comfortable to wear at conventions. So, I'm very grateful for that. If you want to know how I made my Uda shoes, I did make a video explaining how I remade them, so that video will be linked down below if you want to know how to make the Uda shoes. Stay tuned for my next video, which is going to be how I made my Clara Valak cosplay from the anime Welcome to Demon School Idemakun. It was a con crunch, but we survived and went to the con with the costume, so that's literally all I could ask for. So if you want to see that video, stay tuned, subscribe, and follow along on my cosplay journey. Um, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.